Okay, we're back live in Las Vegas for the exclusive coverage of SiliconANGLE and Mookie Bonds, the Cube. We go out to the events, scour all the news, go where the stories are, find out where the signal is, share that with you on siliconangle.com and wikibon.org. And of course, the videos are on siliconangle.tv. And we've introduced our new CrowdChat application, which is going, it's more like Reddit AMA, Dave. So the people respond to that, ask me anything uh, uh, chat when I tell people about that. So we're here to get the story from Stu Miniman, Dave Vellante, my co-host, Stu Miniman, uh, analyst at the Wikibon, has been here since Monday, uh, getting the analyst meeting, talking to customers, getting the scoop out on the ground, scouring for stories. Stu, um, let's kick it off. What are, you, what are you seeing? What are you learned? What's your report? So, so John, uh, it, it's exciting to be here, and the, the excitement's palpable uh, at, at the event. So, you know, this has uh, been called, called the Cloud Super Bowl. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the, last night, uh, all the Clouderati were hanging out at the bar. You know, I know you were, uh, you know, talking with Werner Vogels. Uh, you know, we, we saw lots of people that we know from uh, across the community, a lot of people that were at the OpenStack conference in Hong Kong last week. Uh, and, you know, Amazon is a force to be reckoned with. Uh, they, they, we saw last year uh, when this event kicked off for the first time, it was really the, the shot heard around the enterprise as to Amazon is coming after the enterprise, coming after every workload. Uh, Andy Jassy this morning talked about how, uh, you know, the, the traditional people like to say that, uh, you know, 75% of stuff is going to live still on premise, and Amazon thinks it's more like maybe 10% will live on premise, and the rest of it will live up in the cloud. So, uh, you, you know, even and after, you know, John, we've been watching this for a bunch of years, that public cloud versus private cloud argument that we've been having for a while is still going on a little bit. Yeah, it's not a lot of water on that, in that uh, actually that doesn't hold a lot of water, and, and that's, that, that ship is really niche in my opinion. I think Eucalyptus has got a focused strategy on that, but Stu, you're right on the money, and I think uh, Wikibon called it, we called it on theCUBE, Dave, two years ago, we saw, we said on theCUBE, Amazon is a freight train heading right to the enterprise. Right, we called it, I think we were the first ones to actually call that. And then last year we had coverage. Now, Amazon is full throttle, as Stu said, Dave, going hard at the enterprise, and they're, they're, not, they're not holding back. No. This scene specifically, we're doing auditing, these notifications, all this stuff is enterprise, the feature set. No, and I think that uh, the interesting thing to me is the, the competitive dynamic that you're seeing now with the, the traditional IT vendors. They're all lining up. I mean, they've been, they've, they've, they've been thinking about this for well over a year now. They saw reInvent last year. They heard, you know, Jassy's keynote, and they reacted. Now, they haven't responded in terms of de de developing solutions that are as competitive as they need to be. But you, IBM went out and bought software. You see, you know, VMware spinning off Pivotal. So they're making their moves. And it, the, I got to give the enterprise guys a lot of credit. You know, they're. They're not deer in the headlights like the enterprise guys used to be in the 80s and 90s when they would deny things like you know, the microprocessor revolution. So companies today, they're much more well-funded and so it's going to be really interesting to see how they fight and hang on to their existing base. Stu, what do you think? I mean, you walk around uh, uh, reInvent, a lot of developers here, not a lot of CIOs in science. I, mean, I think I'm the only guy with a suit on. But so, so a lot of developers, that's their stronghold, but can they, bleed into the enterprise and really unseat that trillion dollar opportunity. Yeah, D Dave, and, and the answer is yes. You know, I've, I've talked to, uh, there are a few of the enterprise players here and people that even sell infrastructure here that are partnering with Amazon and they say there are some buyers uh, that, that are looking at these solutions because it's a different pricing dynamic. Uh, you know, you, you guys did a great interview with James Hamilton earlier and talked about, you know, storage for example and just how Amazon can really just you know, change that pricing dynamic so much. Uh, it was interesting, I actually had a side conversation with James uh, and we, we talked about, um, you know, there are different classes of storage. You can have S3 or, you know, I can do the, you know, penny per, you know, terabyte per month uh, and, and do that. And I said, well, you know, if I, if I do the cheapest, uh, you know, offering that you have, you know, how many people really want to do that? And he said, well, you know, because we offer that and enough people do it, which can you know, disrupt tape, it also gives us massive scale that we can then leverage. Uh, you know, they talked about the virtuous cycle this morning. Amazon adds more features, more people use it, uh, they get more feedback for the community, and Amazon just gets bigger and bigger. And you know, I look at things from a, from a supplier and from an infrastructure standpoint, I mean, 
you know, Amazon is such a big player. They, you know, have to be like the largest buyer of servers in the market. I mean, you see Intel's here. Uh, and you know, the same for you know, switching and you know, disk drives and flash. I mean, they're, they're just a huge, huge consumer of these technologies and can really just have a huge impact on what the market's doing. So today, Stu, uh, Amazon announced workspaces, the uh, VDI for the cloud, essentially. Um, what's your take on that? Yeah, so uh, you know, definitely the one that caught uh, all of us, especially with, with a virtualization background, uh, you, you know, a little bit surprised that they did this because VDI has been you know, this hyped solution for many, many years, and it's been so long that it really hasn't delivered on it. Uh, our analysis, of course, we've looked at this for many years, is you know, it's uh, you know, the pricing, the complication of putting this entire stack together, and all the politics of putting uh, moving from your traditional desktop environment into uh, you know, some new version that hopefully allows you to be more mobile is very complicated. So uh, some of the biggest barriers are you know, performance and cost and you know, how fast it is to roll this out. And Amazon really can have a significant impact on this. And you know, it is a you know, you know, credible uh, you know, player in this space now. So who gets impacted? So Jerry, we had Jerry Chen on earlier. He basically said, hey, I started the whole VDI thing. You know, I kind of coined the term when he was at VMware. Obviously, you got, you got Citrix uh, yeah. making you know, inroads. A lot, of, a lot of customers applying VDI in certain use cases, right? Um, but this still seems to be, I mean, I t tweeted today, VDI is like a do-over. Even John, you and I talked about, you know, a couple of VM worlds ago, why do they even call it virtual desktop? It's all about mobile. So I feel like, <laughs> you guys were kind of down on, on, you and Jerry were a little bit down on the, the VDI market in general this morning, but I feel like there's still a lot of potential there. No, I mean, let me, let me be clear. I'm down on VDI in general because of, of the misfires over the years, and that's been basically yeah, it sucks. That's I mean, been very <laughs> frustrating. But the tide is turning with edge devices, Internet of Things, big data analytics, we heard from Sumo Logic, got Splunk. We are now going to see, I believe, the right VDI, using virtualization and automation to make the stuff just work, right? It's like what ServiceNow is doing with IT service management. Making the edge device work seamlessly is the goal, period. Whether there's a desktop or mobile. You know what it reminds me of, and this is a, this is a kind of a weird analogy, it's not as big, but you remember when you know, Compaq dominated the PC business, and, and you know, Dell came late to the game, but they came with a better model. And Dell became the, a dominant player, and they disrupted it. I feel like the timing is right for Amazon. They're architecting around mobile. You know, they, they've been hiring tons of mobile developers. Andy Jassy told us that, John, at our one-on-one -on -one in, in New York. So I actually feel like a lot of people are going to glom onto this. So uh, I, I guess my counterpoint to that would be, um, one of the worst things about working for a big company is that corporate image. I hate to use my corporate image, I hate to have to you know, dial into VPN, and really what VDI is doing is extending that. So for the price of what I can do for Amazon Workspaces, it looks compelling, but what if I just give everybody a Chromebook and use Google Apps? <laughs> it's a heck of a lot cheaper, and you know, Dave, we use you know, we don't have a corporate image at Wikibon. Yeah, I wouldn't we want live VDI. on Google applications. You, you can, you I don't need it. So if I can move VDI. to much more modern applications, yeah. if I'm on Salesforce. I don't even know Force, what Outlook looks like anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> if, if, if I can enable, you know, SaaS providers more and have a new mobile engagement. Okay, so all right, maybe you guys are right. Maybe all, all you Lotus Notes users out there, you're going to love <laughs> workspaces. Yeah, so I mean, you know, the, the, the nice thing about workspaces is, right, if I have a Windows environment today, and, and I, I was interested in VDI, but it, the cost and the complication of it were holding me back, um, you know, th this is a good thing to try, and who's it hurt most? I think Citrix is the one that loses the most here, who is a pretty big partner of Stu, yeah, Stu, I got to ask you, the people want to know what Stu thinks. I, I get emails all the time, what does Stu think? So I got to ask you, you're very social on the social media, What's going on with this event? What do you think about what's happening here? Give us like the Stu perspective. What's going on around the ecosystem, the people involved, some of the personalities, and what are people thinking about and what's going on with the show here? What's your take? Yeah, and, and what does Stu think? Tell us. Thanks, John. I'm happy to share with the community always. <laughs> um, it, 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 for me, it's really that dichotomy. If you think, look at, you know, if you come to some of the kind of more traditional infrastructure guys, you've got, you know, the hardware huggers out there, and we've got all of our, you know, applications out there. You know, it, it's really refreshing to see, you know, so many startups, and, you know, we talked about all 
the developer communities. Uh, I mean, heck, Amazon, they're giving out, not giving out t-shirts, they've got hoodies for everyone. Uh, so, you know, we, we should all be coding uh, and, you know, helping build the new generation of uh, where technology goes. Uh, so, you know, where, what's going to happen to the IT workforce? Hopefully, you know, two years from now, you won't be doing the same thing that you're doing now. Uh, there was a quote I loved from, from Amazon that said, if you go to most people in IT and said, do you want to keep doing the same thing day after day, month after month, year after year, they're going to say no. I want to I want to innovate, and enterprises want to innovate. So if I have things that I can try it better, okay. you know, move faster, it's a little bit of Kool-Aid injection here at Amazon, but uh, you know, it is a, a compelling future. Final question for you, Stu, as we wrap up the Stu segment here. What are people talking about privately? What's going on? I know you're in on a lot of inner circle conversations. What's the private conversation? You don't have to name names, but what are people talking about privately behind the closed doors about what's going on at Amazon? So, so I mean, Amazon is a force to be reckoned with, but it, it's, it's a challenge, you know, how much do you really want to partner with Amazon uh, because, uh, you know, there are cases where Amazon, you know, will just take over your business. If Amazon, you know, just kind of grows and grows and grows, how much control do they have? You know, we talked about how much control Microsoft had, you know, for many years and how they would take over markets that their partner ecosystem had. We've seen what VMware has done. They built a huge ecosystem and they're growing out some of their feature functionality in that battle, that tug of war, and you expect to see the same with Amazon as they grow their ecosystem. There's a lot of people riding their coattails and building their businesses around it, but you know, you know, in, in the enterprise especially, you know, there's only so many dollars to be spent. So, you know, where do I make those bets and, and where do I go into the market? Stu Miniman, analyst at Wikibon, out on the floor, out at night, doing the tweet ups, meet ups, drink ups, um, beers, uh, what they call it, the cloud beers, all kinds of great stuff going on socially, but also more importantly, a lot of action in cloud. Thanks, Stu, for coming on and sharing your perspective. We'll be right back with our final wrap up with just John and Dave, giving the summary of day two. We'll be right back after this short break.